<laughs> I think it's about that time. We're going to start something. We're going to start a little something, something. We are going to start a little something, something. And I see Deb is here. Great day, mom. I should look over here. I'll look over here because I was looking over here. But I should really look over here. Misdirection. All right. Um, let's see here. With the roots of empathy, Tim is here. Retired mom. Anne has just dropped into the house, but Chelsea Jules got us started with Happy Friday. So that's a good thing. I am looking for Kim. We just talked. We have just spoken just a moment ago. Art for Annie has just showed up. As I said, Anne is in the house and Kay is here. Kay did a great job when you uh, were here on the show. Thank you for being here now. Retired mom is here as well. Let me turn this on. All right. We are waiting for uh, Kim at this moment. If for some reason or another, I need to reboot this puppy and turn it around, I will uh, to see what's going on with Kim. But uh, just so you know, Hold on one second here. In real time, you're seeing me try to connect with my guest. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. You, you guys, that's two shows in a row that I actually started singing. I think I did that yesterday. I really shouldn't do that. That's not why you're here. You're here for some positive, informative encouragement. And a little bit of fun. Uh, so we're going to see what's uh, happening here. Kim is talking back to me. Um, there we go. I mean that in a positive way. So hopefully we will get here in a moment. Um, what I do want to mention is tomorrow. The lady herself, Coach Jess, will be back. The Coach Jess show will be back on Narc Abuse TV Network at 1 p.m. Pacific time and at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So, saying hello to everybody here. Do that. Uh, Natasha. And uh, I'm just curious. Um, Miss Djibouti, can you please tell me your name so that way I don't have to always say. If I'm saying it, maybe I'm saying it wrong. You got to tell me your name, girlfriend. <gasps> the real Susie Waller is here. <laughs> I just love that name. Walla, Walla, Hala. Okay, so Waller's here. Everybody's chiming in. Uh, yes, this is not like any other show that you uh, you step into. <laughs> okay, I get it. It's Djibouti, but give me a name so I don't have to always. Say. You know what? That's not funny. You're doing it to, to me on purpose in on social media. So uh, I'll make up a fake name for you then. Uh, I'm just gonna call you Lady D. We'll call you Lady D or Lady B, whichever at this point. Uh, so everyone, um, thank you so much for being here. The real Susie Waller. I may, this, this of course will probably never, you'll never be able to see this again because I'm probably going to have to disconnect here and try to see what's happening with my guests because we were just talking. So I just got to make sure everything is okay with her. Let's see here. Is it not here? No, nope, that's not there. Let me just double check over here. Call me B. Ooh, I like that. Okay. I'll call you B. Uh, let's see here. We got that. We got that. All right. So consider this a free chat because I am going to go see what's happening with my guest, Susie Walla Nesh B1990. Ooh, yellow, purple, KM. You guys are really good with some of these names. Seriously. I am so lame that you guys have some cool names. Um, I am going to go check on my guests. I love each and every one of you, but I shall return and we will reboot. Pearl Spy is jumping in. Uh, and now I know, Miss. What is that? What do you got there? Are those airplanes? Those are airplanes. I think that's what you got going on there. All right. We have so many guests coming your way. Today is Kim. I'm going to go check on her and see what's going on. And um, she said she was going to be here, but something must have happened. So let me double check with her on our connection and see what's going on. But oh, there she is. This is going to be the longest intro I've ever had. Uh, so Kim is here, uh, enough of me and more of Kim is what you want. We're going to do that. So let's do that right now. Hey. 
<laughs> what a goofball. I am such a goofball. How are you, my beautiful friend? I'm good. I'm well. Are Thank you, you. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We are back, and I did my best to, to pull out as many <laughs> questions as I could and everything. Let's, uh, let's do what I love to do, which is kill the music. Um, you had a lot, Kim. <laughs> oh, I, I think you, you either you either are number one or number two since I've been on since we've been doing this that I've had that many in a commercial break that took me that long oh, to try God. to get it all in that I literally could not finish what I normally do and I just had to come up with something new on how to capture uh, everything and uh, normally I can capture everything and then bring it back to the second segment uh, there was too much. <laughs> so, there's literally too much. I am going we'll to have to do take... it again then. <laughs> yes. And wait, you will have questions already ready before that show ever gets out. Because there was a lot that was in there that we did not even touch on. Uh, so everyone, I just want to say thank you for your questions. If you're here now or if you watch this back, I don't want you to think that we kicked you to the curb and we ignored you. Uh, it, your question will surface in a, a future project with Kim. They won't surface in somebody else's show. Your question will surface in something that Kim and I will put together. Uh, as of right now, I believe we, we talked about two other uh, segments or episodes that we could do together. Um, right now, we are in our second episode together uh, with Kim. Um, and I, um, I've got to ask you this. Okay. Based upon your experience, and everybody's, uh, a number of people are getting to know you for the first time today. Uh, so based upon your experience, someone's beginning their journey and they need a, they need a little direction of what they need to focus on. What would you say to them? I would say the, probably the best thing to focus on in the beginning, of course, would be to maintain no contact. And what many people don't realize is that cyber snooping is breaking no contact. So when you're jumping on to the narcissist social media to see what they're up to, you're actually breaking no contact. Not good. No bueno, right? Yeah. Not a good move. No bueno, and it's going to just destroy you, what you see anyway. So I do that to yourself. Yeah. All you're going to see is the yeah. love bombing. And by the way, love bombing is always followed with hate bombing. So keep uh, that in mind. Okay, so that's... They, let's pick me. I'm going to use me as, as the person. Okay. So I'm snooping around trying to see what they're up to, what they're doing. I'm really sabotaging any forward movement for me. Right, because you're already feeling less than because of all the emotional abuse that you've endured from the narcissist. Yeah. So you already yeah. are starting to believe a little bit of what they said. And so when you get on there and you see them in Bora Bora getting engaged with the new supply, <laughs> right, you know, right, you're going to believe it. You're going to believe it. You're going to feed into the story, and then it will become your storyline. Then you're going to make, you're going to have to fill in the gap some way because you don't really know what's happening. So you're going to create that narrative. You're going to create that storyline, and it's just going to be devastating. Yeah. And so, what needs um, to be the primary? thing that a person is focusing on if they're waking up in the morning they know they've been through this relationship with a troublemaker a knucklehead someone who is out to literally emotionally if not mentally and physically hurt them as it were uh to drive a person crazy is what their intent was or a number of things what should they be focusing on when they get up in the morning after listening to a show like this and hearing you what should be their game plan for tomorrow I would recommend, you know, finding some guided meditations and listening to those. I am really such a huge fan of guided meditations because when I first started my own journey, I didn't know anything about narcissism. I had no clue what I was going through. And then someone turned me on to guided meditations, and they just really saved my life. And, uh, uh, but you, go ahead. Go ahead, and please. The reason they work so well is if you listen to them consistently, they will over time begin to overwrite some of the negative programming 
And so it will rewire your neurological pathways and will, you know, some of the traumatic wiring will start to fade. Okay. So that gives a person a sense of direction so they're not putting all their energies toward the person who doesn't want them. And no right. doubt, never really, never really wanted them, no doubt. Right. Exactly. Now, someone just mentioned here in the chat that they had to cyber snoop, per se, for evidence for their divorce. I guess that can come into play, maybe. But you still got to be careful. I, I mean, it, it depends on the state where you live and what the judge is going to want as evidence. Um, I'm not... <sighs> I'm not sure that proving that someone's liking someone's photos or something would really be evidence in a lot of cases, but it it does sometimes help to be over prepared with documentation. Um, it really just depends on the state and it depends on the judge whether what you find is really going to be helpful or not. Okay. But if your uh, attorney has asked you to collect this evidence, then by all means you should do that. And that's going to be, you know, hard to do because you're still focusing on what the narcissist is doing. Right. Um, it may be something that uh, may have to be what a private investigator does for you instead or someone else so that you right. can emotionally, say emotionally safe. Uh, exactly. And, and not, yeah. And that truly, that truly proves to be the whole goal. Uh, is to try to stay emotionally safe because if not, right. you're just adding more to your problems. Go ahead. You were going to say something. Kim. Well, when you are, you know, checking out the narcissist social media or, you know, doing a drive by or whatever it is showing up, you know, just coincidentally yeah. at their favorite bar. Ooh, yeah. Look, uh, I accidentally am here. I'm accidentally uh, here and I'm, and I'm all dolled up or, or yeah. the guy's, you know, showing his shirt, his, showing his, his chest is open going like, Oh, I'm just accidentally here with your new boyfriend. Yeah. Right. Um, you're going to have those somatic responses, the PTSD triggers, and it's really just going to send you into a spiral. It's really just not worth it. Yeah. When it comes to our vibe and who we are, there are a lot of people who mention that the reason we have, experienced or a person has experienced a narcissist in their life is because it's essentially their fault. It's the vibe they put off or a number of things. Come on, Kim, right. let's be controversial. Let's be controversial. No, just, okay. <laughs> ahead, I'm, your, the your one, I'm the controversial one. I really am. Um, no, no, really? I used, to, <laughs> I used to believe that too. <laughs> I used to believe that, and I even wrote an article about it years ago, about how our vibe attracts narcissists, because it was about that time that I was learning about the law of attraction, and which I do believe in to an extent, but it's not really a good um, discipline or approach for trauma survivors, because some of it is just too black and white. But aside from all of that, uh, our vibe does not attract narcissists. Um, we literally cannot get in our car or even walk down the street in our neighborhood without passing a few narcissistic people. Yeah. They are everywhere now. Everywhere. Yeah. And there could possibly be things about our mannerisms that could signal to a, a manipulator that we could, you know, possibly fall for their, um, their lies like um, people who have low self-esteem or maybe who are just sad or maybe they're not making a lot of eye contact they're looking down a lot they might look wistful you know those sorts of things but the thing is humans are like a buffet to narcissists okay wow. they like all flavors so wow. whereas we used to think well you know I'm looking in a certain way or I'm giving off this vibe, right? And yeah. I'm going to attract narcissists. That's not true. They will go after I, I, anybody. anyone. Yeah. They, they don't care what they don't care what t-shirt or color you got on. Exactly. It depends they, on the narc what mood they're in that day. 
Exactly. And they can look at someone who's really on top of their game, successful, out somewhere, having a grand time. And the narcissist could think to themselves, I just need to take them down a notch or two. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. So somebody's minding their own business on their purpose, as it were, minding their own business. And they're going like, no, I want to bring them down. I want them to be beneath me. And yes. they just take off and and put the charm on and do what they need to. Or let me I mean let me add this other trophy to my shelf and collection of people who look good and I want to add them as a trophy to me and then discard them. Right. Yes. You know Kim that you know Kim that's crazy, right? That just <laughs> that is absolutely you. ridiculously stupidly crazy. It's crazy, but you can't make this stuff up. Yeah. yeah. Um but to go back to this vibe thing, no, I do not believe our vibe attracts narcissists. I'm telling you, that's why I'm such a huge advocate for boundaries. As long okay. as you have boundaries and mm -hmm. you can trust yourself, you don't have to worry about whether other people are narcissists because you know you have your own back and you know when someone starts wiling out, that you're just going to be like, see you later, have a good life. And you're going to mean it, and you're going to walk away. You don't have to worry anymore. Yeah, so that seems to be a common thing to do the worrying instead of what you just mentioned. Uh, it's common to live in a state of constant suspicion, um, always looking over the shoulder, when is the next narc? To the point some people, even on the show here, have come on as guests that it was hard for them to just start living again because they were stuck in this mode of hypervigilance, but a different type now. <laughs> is Now right. from hypervigilance of living with a narc, they went to hypervigilance of just living by themselves, afraid of it happening again. Well, the thing is, people are always going to show their true colors eventually. And so yeah. that's when, sometimes it's going to take a while for you to figure it out. And that's, the risk we have to take. If having a romantic relationship, for example, is something that you want for yourself, loneliness has actually been proven recently to be worse than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Wow. Loneliness is its own epidemic right now, and it actually subtracts years from your life. And that's why I feel so sorry for people when I see them saying, I'll never date again. I'm just going to be lonely, you know, single the rest yeah. of my life. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, some people like that, right? Some yeah, people of course. Some people are okay Understandable. that way. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but not everyone feels that way. I don't want to be alone the rest of my life. Um, and so that's why boundaries and walking away, trusting yourself, that's really all you need. And – when you say boundaries, amazing you bring that out. Now, how am I going to do this? Oh, look, I have three cards. I have three <laughs> cards <laughs> uh, that I'm going to highlight. And I don't know. That word may be there. Let's just happen to see. But uh, we, have, uh, we have yellow. Uh, not, excuse me. We have orange. And we have two green. Uh, okay. Two green cards, index cards that we're going to do in just a second or two here. But everyone has been writing because you have been talking and they've been sharing their thoughts. Uh, Mama Razi says walking on eggshells was her experience. Uh, she says that she was good, a good fuel giver. <laughs> uh, I always stood up for myself, uh, very feisty, and he loved that. Uh, so she constantly gave her, pre her, but the narc that was in her life, uh, fuel because of her personality. Uh, but of course, she is now divorced from him, is what she highlighted. Uh, Share, Share Unbound says, conditioning can open us to vulnerability in an unwanted way. Uh, feel free to expand on that uh, if you'd like to. Um, I have a question for you from okay. someone in the audience. Capri says, how does one first recognize they're living in a trauma bond? I would say it it would be based on how you feel on a regular basis. Like what I like to do is compare a relationship's climate to the actual weather, right? So you have some places on the globe. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was pre that's pretty good. 
<laughs> you like to compare relationships to like the actual climate or weather across right. the planet. So let's say a normal relationship, okay? I say normal, but that doesn't mean there's no conflict, right? Let's course, say yeah. your relationship climate is usually clear skies, maybe a little sprinkle here and there. You know, it could be a possible flood once a year, pop, you know, something like that. Yeah, right. right. Okay. Just those are normal relationship issues. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a toxic relationship, there are going to be earthquakes, tsunamis, mudslides uh, yeah. all the time. You're constantly putting time. out fires. But it really depends on how you feel. A normal relationship does not cause a trauma bond. A normal okay. relationship could be painful um, sometimes, depending on the couple and depending on the stuff they're going through. But it's mm. not going to make you feel bad about yourself. It's not going to make you feel depressed or suicidal. It's not going to make you give up on your on your life. It's not going to make you give up on your kids. Uh, yeah. That's not what normal relationships do to a person. Yeah, and you're getting you're getting a lot of agreement across the screen as you're speaking with all the hearts <laughs> as you're talking. Uh, I love the weather uh, analogy and comparison. That is that is beautiful. Matter of fact, uh, share unbound. Uh, share says. Yes, sunny with a chance of rain is a healthy relationship. He puts a little umbrella with some sprinkles. Uh, there, everybody's agreeing with you. Um, Art for Annie, Anastasia says, I used to use images to describe climate in my marriage. And see, you're getting more, you struck a chord here, man. Everybody's like, <laughs> dump it in. Uh, what I did learn from 34 years is what I don't want ever again that he taught me. So I'm reading, as you, uh, as you can see here, people are connecting with what you're saying, but they're also recognizing that they can move forward, that they have a choice now. Yes. Um, they don't have to feel like it was shoved up on them. They, well, she says 34 years. You know, that's, that's almost three and a half decades. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a long time. That's... And now she's recognizing that she has chosen better because now she has since divorced. divorced oh, good. Time. Good. Um. Capri says, uh, you're getting more here, um, Capri says, and if that's normal, that is a traumatic relationship, she's saying, could a friend help wake, like, another person up? Uh, could a friend help wake one up? Less, in other words, you're seeing that your friend may be uh, in a the traumatic relationship. The thing is, as much as we want to help a loved one when they're going through it, it's... Mm -hmm. It's very much like dealing with a person who's addicted to drugs or alcohol. It okay. has to be something they want for themselves. And a lot of times we might even approach our loved one with information or research or a study or something. And mm -hmm. the person will get angry because they're not ready to hear it, you know. Yeah. I, you know, I lost a lot of friends because I would back, you know, when I was going through it because I just couldn't stop talking about all the issues in the relationship. And I finally just had to stop talking about it. No one could relate. No one could understand why I was staying. But I did have one friend who stuck by me all throughout that marriage. And she was not judgmental. And she really... You know, she helped a lot. But when people would try to talk to me about my situation, I would get angry a lot of times, which I, I now realize because I had a, you know, I, I was experiencing Stockholm Syndrome, basically. Oh, okay. and Got it. Um, So, yeah, we can, we can just hope that they'll finally come around. We have to have some... Often what happens is we have to have a really awful incident for us to leave. There has to be a psychological shift mm -hmm. where we realize there is just, it's the point of no return. Yeah. Sometimes that shift is very devastating. You know, I have worked with people and communicated with people whose children took their own lives 
Wow. I have, I've had a few who even had two wow. children take their lives because they were in that toxic environment. Um, so it's really important to recognize what's happening. And we don't have to label someone a narcissist to realize that the relationship is toxic. Right. A person can start to research to the point that they got to make sure that's the label so that they can get a better understanding. But the reality of it is, from what you're saying, we don't have to focus on labeling a narc. Right. Because they could be, they could be a, a psychopath. They could be a sociopath. And people like that are so cunning that you might not ever get any actual proof. You have to go about how you feel. That your 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 emotions and your emotional state, your mental state, your mental health, that's going to tell you this relationship doesn't feel good. I'm always in fight or flight. I'm triggered. I can't, you know, think logically. Those are the signs that you're in a toxic relationship. And it it uh, it means that someone has to then move themselves to action. And action doesn't always mean just googling something and watching a bunch of YouTube videos. They yeah. may need to make another step that they are able to make to protect themselves emotionally because it could mean their life. It, it absolutely could. People don't realize that. I mean, I just had a coaching client a couple of weeks ago who, um, you know, she was struggling with leaving uh, her husband. I guess they were in the middle of a separation and a divorce. Well, he was stringing along a couple of other women. He was stringing along um, an ex-girlfriend and um, his ex-wife. Well, this woman went to her house to, to, you know, unexpectedly to pick something up and someone was waiting there with a gun. Oh, my goodness. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. People don't understand how dangerous this is. Because you just yeah. you, you could think you're dealing with a garden variety narcissist when really you know they're more sinister than mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. And how do you know? I had yeah. one Matter woman fact, say that the husband had taken out the carbon monoxide detectors and turned the gas on to try to kill her and her kids. So you know. Okay, if, I, I have to tell you, I, I've heard more of that 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 people find themselves in a position where their life is being threatened, either slowly poisoned or other things. I've never heard that much until we started doing this. And I find that fascinating that people don't recognize this is real. Uh, you were going to say something before I, I cut you off. Go ahead. If the person you are with does one horrible thing that other people, most people wouldn't do, you need to get yeah. out. That could be killing a pet. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've heard of that happening so much, um, you know, attacking your child. Yeah. Um, I've heard of that happening. Did you call mm -hmm. the police? Not really. And I'm thinking, yeah. why not? Yeah. Um, but you know, they're doing something really awful, you know, showing up at your job and trying to get you fired, you know, making a scene, those sorts of things are not normal and they are signs that someone is dysfunctional and pathological yeah when we start to focus on um labeling someone it can give a sense of direction um as uh one per person puts it here art for annie says it helped me to label because then i had no choice and no chance to change them i stepped out uh, but what you're talking about is going to that point that we can get addicted to the research and never make a move and uh, never really start the healing process or, or as you said in the previous segment put up a wall the research can help you put up a wall start to understand boundaries and so forth uh, nobody will believe you is the quote here on the screen they always think you're in this fantastic relationship with this amazing guy the one with the mask um, yeah that proves I to be that. that proof i'm sorry please go ahead I was only going to say, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yes, that, proves that to be, happens. That proves to be the life for a lot of people. Unfortunately for you, you're stuck with me in a second episode, and I get to have some more fun with you. And <laughs> uh, 
uh, I am now, what I'm about to read to you now from uh, the three cards here, the three cards here, uh, come from uh, some of the comments that were in the previous segment. Okay. Uh, I had something else planned, but I, because everybody didn't get all their questions in, I took some of what they said and turned them into some new cards for you. I'll save the other ones for another time. Okay. okay. First thing that was highlighted uh, that people want to talk about and were talking about while we were talking in the first segment uh, was this. First one, green card here, red flags. Feel free to talk about red flags to the audience. Okay. Did I lose you? I Did think you we me? had a little bit of a glitch there. We Did have a glitch. Me? Okay, so the first uh, card is going to be about red flags. Did you get me there? Red flags. Sometimes the red flags don't show up for a while, especially someone, you know, a, a manipulator who's on top of their game. That's the whole secret sauce to coercive control and narcissistic abuse is, is mirroring. So that's why a lot of times a manipulator or a narcissist seems so interested in you when you first meet them. And... They'll pretend that they have a lot of things in common with you. Like you might mention casually some author that you like, and suddenly you spot them with that book <laughs> under their arm, right? <laughs> and so um, that is li that is literally that pathetic. Is that is that is so pathetic. <laughs> it, it happens. I have had. I I'm vegetarian, so I don't eat meat, right? Okay. All right. And I have had people say, yeah, my my ex-narcissist is suddenly vegan or vegetarian because they found this new supply who doesn't eat meat, you know. I'm like, good yeah. luck with that. They're going to find it out. Yeah. yeah. Later. They, got ribbed, they got ribbed in the closet. <laughs> they're eating in the closet. All right. All right. right. <laughs> the truth um, self is – okay, go ahead. Red flags. Okay, what – Think about it this way. If I'm, you know, I'm almost 51. I'm going to be date if I were out dating someone. Um, you're, you're killing, you're I killing just, me, Kim. You're killing me, Kim, because I'm like much older than you. <laughs> you're killing me. You're, you're well, killing me, Kim. Every age, time you say it, I want to pull my AARP card out. Just to, no, go, go ahead. Well, people our age <laughs> should not be acting like juveniles in middle or high school, right? They yeah. shouldn't be saying insulting things. They shouldn't be picking on you and calling you names and, and acting yeah. that way. That's just not emotional maturity. So that is a, a red flag. Okay. The way they're um, treating, again, treating the wait staff when you go to the restaurant. You know, my ex, for example, I hated going out to dinner with him because he was the kind of guy that would have the waitress or the waiter, you know, wait staff going back and forth all night, free biscuits, oh free that salad. And at yep. the end of the night, $2 tip. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That would be a problem if I went out with somebody like that. Yeah. yeah. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing more than anything else. <laughs> It is. And of course, I would try to give them extra money that always yeah. calls a, a fight. But, you know, things that just don't feel right. They're not jiving yeah. with you. You know, talking about people behind their back, bashing an ex. Oh, all the exers were crazy. Right? All of them, yeah. really? All of your exes were crazy? What made them crazy, exactly? <laughs> Who made, who made them crazy without a doubt? Right. Okay, so those are red flags. Need to keep that in mind, everyone. Feel free to watch this back over and over because that's very, very good that you highlighted that. Okay, now, this is where you get to choose. I have okay. two cards left for this segment. We have a orange one and we have a green one. Choose carefully. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. And, I'm not going to make that sound like I was threatening. I, I know. One. No, 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 no. The third segment with the three yellow are the trap door because I'm not changing those. I, okay. I deliberately picked those. It took me a few weeks to come up with those three. All right, so two cards. Which one do you want first? And which I'm one you want last? Green. I'm going with the you green. Going with the, man, you should. You, okay, if you say so. All right, here we go. <laughs> so the green card that you chose, the subject that was talked about in the previous segment that we didn't get to 
uh, from the audience was gas lighting. Gas lighting. Feel free to talk to the audience about gas lighting. Honestly, the entire relationship with a narcissist is all gaslighting, all of it. The love bombing, the devaluing, the discard, it's all gaslighting, which is a way to brainwash you into thinking that whatever the narcissist says is true. I mean, you know, they might do things like, you know, I've seen examples like move your keys to another room. And so you're looking for the keys, knowing you put them in one spot and then you can't find them. And there are some, you know, narcissists who will do things like that. But gaslighting could be anything like your friends told me not to trust you. I shouldn't wow. believe them, e even though the friends never said anything at all like that. Right. Um, Gaslighting could be anything. You know, you're in the wrong religion. You believe in the wrong God. Um, you, you don't wow. look right. You're supposed to be dressing professional, but you look awful. It can be anything. Ooh. Anything that comes out of the narcissist's mouth is technically gaslighting. It's all a lie. All of it. And the whole so, pur purpose of it is to do what then? What Their objective in gaslighting, I remember most a, a lot of the audience, they're beginning their journey and just now learning that they've been gaslit. So their whole purpose in doing this whole lying is for what? Okay. The way I like to think about it is like, it's, it's a virus that gets into your brain and overwrites okay. your, your belief system. Okay. So everything you believe about yourself and everything you believe about life and the way life is gets overwritten mm -hmm. with the narcissist code, you know, for lack of a better word. Okay. Uh -huh. And it's, it's all so they can make you feel bad about yourself so that they can then control you. So they That's need the individual. The, the target needs to feel bad about themselves. Because then they are in a position, they get in a position where they're able to make you feel better. So then you will get addicted to the, the, the new high that they, that in life, which will be the narc. Right. They I become your the drug. The hurt and rescue. The hurt and hurt, rescue just, cycle. The hurt and rescue cycle. Okay, that is, okay, so, and this is not something they are not good at, right? You're, based upon what I've read, uh, your material, they're good at this. This whole cycle that they create. Right. I'm telling you, I, I just, I'm obsessed with the Deborah Newell's story, Dirty John, and really um, the book is, is a lot better than even the, the um, Netflix series and the podcast because she goes into a little mm -hmm. bit more detail about what co coercive control is. And really, it's just so that person can get into your brain, bring you down, and you mm -hmm. become a puppet for them, basically. Well, that, that means uh, not just physically, uh, sex or anything like that. We're talking finances, uh, relationships, any networking. Any, they pull whatever they can from you, essentially. Yes. Yes. They will. They want to... They want to dominate and manipulate every single area of your life, and that includes your friends and family. Trying to um, divide you against your kids, take over your finances. Um, it's all just so they can control you. That's why it's now being called coercive control instead of just narcissistic abuse because it can happen uh, by any toxic personality. Yeah. So it's not just it's just one particular quote unquote label. It could happen in many ways. Uh, I have to tell you a couple of things before we get to the last card. Um, but uh, some are saying that this is so validating. They're appreciating that, that you're you're talking about this right now because, uh, you know, people are highlighting they they know they're not crazy now. <laughs> and I, right. I'm laughing because that's a common expression on our on our uh, network. People hear our guests and they go like, my goodness, I thought I was going crazy because they're just finding out after either years of marriage or in a relationship with a boss or with a mate or their parents, yeah. it, they thought it was them the whole time. They literally have been seeking help, thinking and being told, 
you're crazy. You're the one doing that. I didn't move the keys. I have no right. idea what you're talking about. You know, they're doing the gaslighting. Uh, somebody else here highlighted that they often have uh, gaslighting passed off as a joke. Uh, they say, well, I'm just joking. I'm just kidding is what they're highlighting, uh, that it can happen that way, that they're being put down. This, this right. Go ahead. You were going to uh, say? This is when I encourage people, again, you know, if you're dealing with a, an adult, a grown person who's got their own job and they're, you know, 40, 50 years old or even, you know, 30, they shouldn't yeah. be making jokes like that. No, no. Grown adults don't do that, you know. No. It's, a, it's not something that builds a relationship. It's something that destroys or tears down a relationship. And that's, what, that's why what you're saying is very important because it doesn't show something you said, emotional maturity. And it doesn't take rocket science to say that, okay, it's, it's a, if it's a one-off, that's a little different. But to have it as a pattern of a person's lifestyle and communication style, that they have to put other people down or treat the wait staff bad, that's not good. I hope you're ready for the last part. You were going to say something, but I hope you're ready for the last part. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, <the second. laughs> okay. All right. Remember now, you didn't choose this one. You chose, you saved this for last. This one, feel free to, to talk about as much as you want because it was the actual big topic in the first segment that we never got to that people were talking amongst themselves in the group chat. Okay. And the word is boundaries. Feel free to talk about boundaries because a number of people were talking about boundaries in the first segment and we didn't get to their question. So feel free to talk about that right now, Kim. Where do I begin? Okay. Boundaries. <laughs> uh, you picked the right one. You picked the right one for last. But go yes. ahead. Yes. Um, when people are thinking about going into a new relationship, you have to know what your boundaries are. But let me just back it up a little bit, okay? Because some, you know, very accomplished teachers out there are trying to encourage people to set boundaries with narcissists, and that just doesn't work. Uh, it does not work. The only boundaries you can set with a narcissist are legal ones, and even half the time then, they're Don't not work. going to follow those. Well, Trying to set boundaries with a narcissist, always it's always an epic failure every single time. But let's pretend that we're now out of that relationship and we're thinking about okay. dating again. Do not do that without knowing what your personal boundaries and deal breakers are, which mine might be different from yours, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, but things like, uh, if someone's a liar, see you later, alligator. I don't yeah. want anything right. to do with a liar. Um, so, you know, it, would, it could be very simple things, honesty, transparency, compassion, you know, what things... Uh, also, deal breakers, what things will I not ever settle for, not even one time? Got it. And that's going to be, again, different for different people. Um, but I would say infidelity would be a huge one. Mm -hmm. um, stealing, getting a loan and, you know, forging loan papers and getting a loan in your name. Things like that, you know, those are the deal breakers. These are the things that when you discover that these things have happened, you're like, I'm sorry, I, I can't go any further in this relationship. We, we're we just not compatible. I don't see a future for us, but thank you for the time we've spent together. Right. Having the ability and the courage, the wisdom and discernment to say, thank you very much, but no thank you, needs to be something a person is willing to, well, put down on the table to literally say that and then walk away. Because if they don't, they're entering something that is going to possibly cause them endless nightmare. Absolutely. And a lot of us weren't taught to implement or maintain boundaries. That's not something that most of us learned as children or even yeah. as young adults. And so it no. is a new concept. And it's extremely difficult to do in the beginning, but it's like a muscle. 
You start out small and you just keep building it up. Yeah. Um, somebody's highlighting, agreeing with you about the lying, uh, the narcissist, uh, people who are toxic, that's essentially their life pattern. They will lie for nothing, for no reason. They just feel accustomed uh, to give in to lying. Uh, you mentioned, and hopefully I got this right, I tried to write it down quickly, honesty, transparency, and I believe you also mentioned compassion. Did you say that as well? Yes. Uh, I believe so these are some just basic fundamental things uh, that a person can keep in mind. I'm repeating uh, a number of things that you say because I mentioned the age of those who watch the show have the analytics show from now from 16 and up. So a lot of people are looking for information that are extremely young in their life because they, they're not getting it at home or they are children of divorce or alcoholics or foster we get a lot of people that are from the foster home system and they've never had anyone tell them or guide them. And uh, your yes. information is going to be beneficial. Go ahead. You're going to say something, please. Um, I, I was just agreeing with everything you just said. And when, when we're, when someone's in that kind of uh, home environment and this is the pattern of their childhood. No one's ever taught them. And all they've seen is yeah. to toxicity yeah. and dysfunction. Yep. It's hard to know what is normal. And that's why I like to keep it simple. Because, you know, lying, uh, again, all the things I just said, very simple things that we want from other people in our relationships. Lying, infidelity, cheating, hitting, all, none of that's normal. It's not normal. Yeah. And so we should to get to the point where we want to hold out for normal people. As yeah. I'm not saying uh, that we're not going to make mistakes, but um, no. for example, someone who's compassionate, they might, they might say something hurtful and then they'll mm -hmm. come back and say, I, I've been thinking, I, I'm so sorry I said that. And then they don't do it again. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So getting an understanding of what to look for means that, a, that at least, a person is not focusing all their attention on what the other person is doing and how bad they are. They're right. setting, well, actually what you're highlighting is, is really setting up a boundary. You're really putting up something good for yourself. I'm only allowing myself to deal with people who live their life this way, which means no one's perfect. Someone is uh, going to be uncomfortable about their weight or their age or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. And, and they're not going to, uh, uh, they may not be, fully uh, truthful in one way or another. Uh, I believe I'm going to get your signal back. I got you back. Uh, you're here. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. We're good. Yes. We're good. Yes. I know you got a phone. You got a phone call from the, from, I you did. know, I did. Uh, somebody Sorry. important, somebody really important. I understand. I understand the government's calling you because they need you to come and go to work <laughs> for them. I understand. Get a, the president's call. The president's calling you. It's just little low me and my little bitty show, you know, just, all right. But what I was going to say is, uh, we have discussed a number of different things. Honesty, transparency, compassion proves to be things we can look for. A number of people are saying, uh, as uh, Cher does, uh, know your non-negotiables. Uh, yes, um, not to give in and just go for whatever. Um, okay, now, people have put questions up for you that are also over here. I have some over here and I have some over here. And, of course, across in front of me, a number of things. I am going to give somebody who's on the screen here. Hopefully you can still hear me. You're all good there, Kim? You good? I'm can you hear good. me still? I'm good. Okay. Uh, let's see here. You got a question. I feel like I am here only to serve their needs, and anything I do is not important. That comes from Carrie Lee Shepard. That's a question for you there. Well, I mean, we know that narcissistic people... Uh, or anyone who has a toxic personality, they're not concerned with other people's needs. It is all about them. And what I would say to that is every passing minute is a chance to turn it all around. You know, start uh, reflecting on whether you want to live your life indefinitely like this. Because at the end of the day, and I'm not saying it's easy, but at the end of the day, we have two choices. We either get up tomorrow and keep living the same life, yeah. or we get up <laughs> yeah. tomorrow and decide what we're going to do differently. 
this is why I wanted you on the show. <laughs> this is why <laughs> this is why why I wanted you on the show to say what you just said right now and you just did it. I was going to try yeah. to get you to say it in the, in the next segment but you you did it you did it without my help there. Thank goodness. Um we have two choices. And a lot of times people don't feel like they have that. I mean, you coach people uh in many different ways. I imagine you get people who feel like they're just trapped and there's nothing they can do and the other person has all the power. I remember feeling that way. Oh. I, I, for for your um, followers, I would imagine most of them don't know who I am. Um, mm -hmm. But if anyone has ever watched my webinar, which is part of my beginner's healing roadmap, I was I was as stuck as they come. I was sick with trauma wow. bonding, Stockholm syndrome. I agreed to go to my ex's country and be his second wife. Okay, no, oh no, you can't, you can't keep going. I have never. You, yeah, agree. Yeah. I agreed to that. Kim, Kim, you agreed to that. I did. I and cannot even imagine. Miles. I can't even imagine you. You agreed to that. I was off in Egypt teaching, you know, because I used to be a teacher, and that's mm -hmm. where I started I my student teaching was in Egypt, yeah. and. The forces of the universe said, nope, you need to come back here. And that's when they had the um, revolution there in 2010, 2011. Yeah. Okay. And All so right. I came back here and um, I was as stuck as they come. You know, I know that what the journey is like. I know it, I know what it's like trying to leave. I know what it's like co-parenting, going to the court hearings, being financially devastated. I've been through all of that. But I'll tell you what, when I got out, and started healing, I was like, why did you wait so long, Kim? Because there are some narcissists who are extremely powerful. They have lots of money and excellent lawyers and all that. But for the, you know, general population, it's a lot of the power we think they have is just in our head. That needs to be, I don't know, make that a T-shirt or a book. Because that seems to be the common theme that I'm getting now in the second season. More people speak as if this person is the almighty and there's nothing they can do. And they have to stay and with the abuse. They just want to learn how to walk on eggshells better. But you're saying that yeah. is not the life. That's not the life. I'm telling you, you know, a lot of people are, are staying because of finances I sold everything I had of value. I was doing odd jobs on Craigslist. I was I even sold my own plasma at one point oh. just to get by so I didn't have to go back to him. And here I am. So it, it is scary. It's scary as heck getting out of there and trying to forge a new life when you're in that kind of traumatized state. But again, once I got out, I realized he wasn't really that powerful. It was just something I thought that I right. thought he was powerful, but he really wasn't. He wasn't. What type of support system did you experience and that you recommend for people to keep in mind as they try to move forward and move out from a, a toxic, abusive situation? What type of support system did you experience? Well, at the beginning, it felt pointless. But the turning point for me was visiting my domestic violence center. They knew exactly mm. all about emotional control and emotional abuse. And, in fact, they prepared me so well, I won a restraining order against my ex pro se. I was there representing myself. That's how well wow. they prepared me. Wow. Um, yeah. So I would say talk to your domestic violence center. Now, I don't know if they're kind of bogged down right now because of the pandemic and there's been yeah. such an increase, but it's worth mm -hmm. trying. Yeah. Uh, I had somebody that's going to be coming on the show and they run a, one of those centers and they said, it's just right now they are inundated with uh, people who are needing help. Uh, people who were women uh, who were at home because the, their abuser went to work. So they were able to kind of still function. But when they lost, the abuser lost his job, well, you can imagine what's taking place now because it's like 24-7 abuse. 
Yeah. yeah, and a lot of people, you know, will ask you, well, do you have any friends or family that you can live mm -hmm. with until you get back on your feet? And they're right. often very um, hesitant to do that. They, they don't want to do that. And I'm thinking, well, what's worse, living with your friend or family member or staying with a narcissist? What are you really getting by doing that? Yeah. Very important. Um, go ahead, please. You're going to say something? Uh, uh, Get out any way you can and, and figure things out after. That's my yeah. advice. You're you're being uh you're being um, loved here on the screen. I have to read you this one. Sassy Soulful uh, says, "I watched your video three years ago, and it's still helpful." Uh, thank you so much. Is what she says. Thank you. Uh, she, she also wanted to uh to ask this question to you, Kim. She says, does the new supply ever get to see the narc for who they truly are? That's a concern of hers, but she's asking that question of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. The new supply is going to see the narcissist for who they are because narcissists have abnormalities in their brain structure. That has been scientifically proven with brain scans. They cannot just switch off their toxicity and their, their disorder or their dysfunction. They just can't flip the switch mm -hmm. and then be someone completely different. The very design of narcissistic abuse is to tear the target down. Every person that the narcissist brings into their life is nothing more than a target. Regardless of what it looks like to the outside world, they're going to do the love bombing, then it's going to be the value, then it's going to be the hate bombing. If they're going to do it no matter who they are, who that person that they bring, friend, foe, their children, their grandparents, children. it doesn't matter. Their own children. Their own grandchildren yeah. also. They'll, they'll just keep it going, right? Right. And it, that's why, worse as, again... As they get old, they're worse as they get older? <clears throat> I think it just depends. Okay. I think it depends on their, their physical health. I think it depends on if they go on any kinds of medications, uh, you know, for depression or anxiety. I got Sorry, you. phone call. No, I got you. Um, yeah. But they usually do get worse with age. I've had people say the narcissist was right there on their deathbed and they never changed, not even when they were dying. So, oh, Yeah, so uh, don't, don't get your hopes uh, going in the wrong direction. I'm going to read something to you before we uh, take a commercial break before our last. We're going to come back with a brief uh, segment of about 30 minutes, 35 minutes when we come back. There's a couple of things that I'm going to uh, have some fun with uh with okay. you i don't i'm not trying to scare you or not i'm not trying to, i just <laughs> want i just want to be transparent with you so that you know have a pretty good idea what's about to happen but i've got to read something to you with someone that's here in the chat uh okay. that looks like that looks like char cali uh 88 maybe i said your name wrong there but uh she highlights um that she's sending you love oh excuse me i'm rephrase that uh she's saying I didn't even know people like this even existed, is what she's saying. She had no idea that there were individuals like what we're, we're discussing, you're highlighting. But she's not alone, right? There's like, no. there's new supply walking around every day for an arc because they were never trained to look out for somebody like that. Well, we have to reach a place of acceptance, okay, about who narcissistic people are. We're not really shocked when we see serial killers. We're not shocked because there are pedophiles. Right. So we, we, we need to realize that there are people like this in the world. They okay. maybe aren't out there raping and killing, but Got they're it. still just as dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're just as dangerous as the next person uh, who would be physically doing something they're out to cause harm. Somebody has just popped up a question. This will be the last thing we're going to do. 
on this segment, everybody. I know everybody's still writing. Feel free to do so. If we don't get it now, um, we will get to it later. Let me see if I got this here. Um, I left the ex-narc husband three years after I listened to your video. I've grown so much because of your help. I wonder if the new supply sees his abusive side. Usually what happens, um, if you're not seeing the abuse, it's because the new supply is hiding it. Whoa, um, that's deep. That's yeah, deep. The, no, Kim, I'm sorry, that's deep. <laughs> Nobody's. I don't think anybody's ever said that on this show. Um, the new supply is hiding it. Yes. So the new supply is, you know, depending on how long they've been together, those cracks have already started to, to be apparent and they're starting to get a taste of the abuse and the manipulation and the conditioning. And there could even be full blown abuse happening, but the supply is supposed to go out into the world and pretend that everything's just wonderful. Otherwise there's going to be hell to pay. So that's why I'm saying don't believe what you see. Don't believe what you hear. Because, again, narcissists cannot just switch it off. Just like a serial killer, you can't just switch it off. They just can't. And Neurologically, a, it's impossible. A person needs to recognize it's not going to happen. And spending a bunch of time trying to dissect the narc to understand what caused them to be the way they are and a number of other things, well, you're pretty much you're holding yourself back because you really it's should be working. Hole. Yeah. Uh, but working on oneself is not that rabbit hole, right? No. Learning. Yeah. And, and sometimes a person needs to recognize they have to work on themselves. Kim, uh, there's, again, no way we can keep up to what's happening over here. <laughs> and it's more people <laughs> than the first time. I, we were holding steady for a moment. I'm looking at it and I'm going like, okay, I, can, I could probably make some sense of that. And it just is still going. Uh, I have to read. Uh, there's so many compliments for you, Kim. I am, I, as you know, I told you, I, I'm able to capture all of this. Uh, I will dissect out the things that you can uh, be able to uh, to use later, or we will talk about. Uh, Narc Expo wanted you to know this. Thank you for being vulnerable, Kim. You are so brave and resilient. So I just wanted to read that to you. And you've got, you. you got tons of those. you got tons of those here. My friend. There's you no know, shame I'm, I'm in my trolling. game. I'm going to tell it all because I just want people to know they're not alone. Go <laughs> uh, girlfriend. Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Let me do one of these. <laughs> the little children trapped in my console just all scream, <laughs> so they're happy for you. Um, Listen, you have so many compliments, Kim, down here. I am literally scrolling. I'm still scrolling. And scrolling oh, and scrolling. That just makes me and I'm feel not, so... I didn't have to go back. We were just talking for that period of time from when I read one thing and then we talked, read another thing, and I am literally still scrolling right now as we speak, and I have not reached the bottom. Uh, that's how well, they love you too, Paxton. They love you too. Paxton. <laughs> well, love you too. Uh, well that, that's very kind of them, and I truly appreciate you saying that. Um, so much is being said to you, and I really appreciate everybody doing this. Yes, you will be able to see this, and uh, you will be able – uh, if you get a third-party app uh, from the, just so you know, uh, all of you in the audience, uh, you can get this and uh, download it and uh, keep it so that you can watch it over and over. But, of course, you can watch it on Narc Abuse TV Network as well. This is, I literally just said that, Kim, and like 15 things just popped up as I'm in that brief time. What did you do? You're going to break my internet over here in California. <laughs> it's just like, this is like, yeah, this is seriously, this is, this is amazing. I truly appreciate that. Uh, everybody, I appreciate each and every one of you, but I got to go. Uh, we're going to reboot. I'm going to upload this. Uh, you can watch it and share it with friends. Uh, I said I was going to take any more questions, and people keep putting up questions. Can you take one or two more before we take a break? And then we're going to come back for a short segment. Because yes. uh, here in the question section, <laughs> let me just see what they got here for you. Kim, they got something for you. Uh, Dan Lup says, I am learning about spiritual narcissism and spiritual bypassing. Would love to hear your take on these. That's one question. I'm just going to uh, throw this one in as well. Someone also says, does narc adult children love their parents? 
Okay, so let's talk about the spiritual narcissism and spiritual bypassing. Spiritual narcissism, I mean, it could have different definitions, but in general, mm -hmm. it is um, someone who thinks that they are spiritually above everyone else. Think cult leader. Yeah. Okay, they're the ones, uh, I'm living this, you know, uh, enlightened life, I'm out there levitating above mountaintops and you're just a literally little you know <laughs> yeah. peon and you're not going to ever get to my level unless you do a b c mm -hmm. and then the goalposts are always being changed so you can never really get to point c because that's the whole plan they don't want you to get to point c spiritual bypassing i've actually written a couple of articles about that a spiritual bypassing is people who say that we should only have good thoughts and don't ever let a negative thought enter your mind. You know, and the law of attraction community is all big on that. It's really spiritual bypassing. The point is we are humans. We're always going to have sadness, anger, uh, frustrations, uh, jealousy. All, we cannot turn those things off. Yeah, Those right, feelings right. are what make us human. So instead of feeling bad about it, befriend those emotions. Now, we don't want to act out in ways that could get us in trouble, uh, but we want to be resilient, but we don't want to try to just shove all that down because it's just going to come out later in very inconvenient ways. So we don't want to feel like we should feel ashamed if we're not having a good day, if we're, we're you know, angry at someone or, or we just can't get over that trauma trigger. Like it's been three days now. What's the deal? Don't feel bad about it. This is not something uh, that is often discussed by many. Um, at least that was brought to my attention. I know we're talking about spiritual bypassing and, uh, spiritual narcissism, um, but my audience has said many times they wanted to talk about it. They just wanted a show to talk about it. You are the first person to come on and address it, and you did it in such a beautiful way. Um, a number of our guests are talking about it right now in the audience. Excuse me, a number of the audience is talking about it right now, agreeing with you. Uh, somebody even says spiritual bypassing is so damaging. There's so much more here that's happening now that you brought the subject up. Um, some are saying they can't stand spiritual bypassing because that comes from a religious spirit, which isn't from God. Uh, there's so many people who have been affected by cults uh, that have approached the show. Uh, some of them have been on the show, and they've actually been able to get away from them. Uh, I've had two that have been interviewed. So this is not something that may be often talked about, but it is real, though, Kim, right, is what you're saying. It this is, actually absolutely. happened. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So if you're experiencing that, do me a favor. Reach out, uh, like, share, comment, follow Kim. Uh, again, like, share, comment, follow Kim, and please make sure you take an interest in her boot camp. We didn't touch on the boot camp in the second segment, but it is talked about in the first segment for any of you who are writing me. Uh, as you can probably tell, I'm looking at two different things here, this screen here and uh, at Kim at the same time because this screen is going crazy over here in the corner of my eye for you, madam, for you. Diva of the day. I love you day. guys. <laughs> I think they love you back. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, always. Somebody just put it right here. A bunch of hearts for you. Uh, yes, always, uh, they're she's saying. She's on my page. Uh, they're loving you. I see They're you. loving you. Yeah, and I, I think they appreciate you recognizing that they're here for you as well. Um, what we're going to do is take a break, everybody. Thank you um, all for the we, question. We, we yes. didn't get to that second question. What was that again? Sorry. No, no. It, oh, that's right. We didn't. You're right. The second question was uh, if uh, if the narc if if the narc children are the uh, the children uh, of narc parents, I believe, uh, are they oh, affected yeah. in some way? Let me, hold on one second. Let me just do something. I'm going to see if it's still here. Or I can read it to. You. Oh, yeah, I can. Uh, let me read it to you. Does narc adult children love their parents? Here's the thing. Narcissism is a defense mechanism. Oh, Just like what we call codependency is a defense mechanism. 
and it generally forms in a child's early developmental years. And if there is no sort of intervention, it just gets stronger. By the time a person becomes an adult, it's highly unlikely they're going to go back the other way. And so what that means is for adults, you know, 20 some, 30 some years old um, and older, of course, but we're talking about children here. By the right. time they reach adulthood, their personality is almost a permanent part of who they are. Mm -hmm. So if they have developed the narcissistic defense mechanism, um, they probably don't feel love the same way we do. Mm. So they're not feeling those warm fuzzies. They're not feeling compassion and they're not feeling any sort of real bond um, unfortunately, and they can create a lot of damage. There is, I just got to throw this to you. So if that's the case, there is no proven way or any way for them to get better unless they become self-aware or what is. Well, there's all this talk about vulnerable narcissism, self-aware narcissism. Um, it's very popular for teachers and therapists and, and writers to, promote to come it, on to and push say it, that. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I, um, again, I when I want to do any research, and I've done this for a long, long time now, I turn to the dark triad and I turn to neuroscience. Yeah. And I have colleagues who are neuropsychologists. Dr. Rhonda Freeman is one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At this time, there is no way to reverse the brain abnormalities that narcissists have in order yeah. for them to become better. Yeah. I, I have to, I have to tell you, I, I have not met anybody that said any different from what you just said. That's substantial uh, to take from because the overall pattern is what you just said. Um, it, reversing it is not, conducive it's not it's not something them agreeing that they need to make a reverse is not don't expect that to happen either well, they, they only know to how to act. oh i take that back they can act to it a lot yeah you got a yes. you got a good point there that's, yeah, that's true. they can agree they agree to it all day they go like oh yeah i could do that yeah let me back in come on let me back in Right. You know, and there are therapists even while I'm treating narcissists in my office, yeah. and I'm seeing improvement. I'm like, well, where is it in real life? I'm not seeing it. <laughs> I'm just going to say, when they come outside the office, you know, when they come outside the office, that's the real proof. But inside the right. office, they play, they're having fun playing you just like they played everybody else when they were little uh, to when they're an adult. All right. They, listen, I love you guys. I really do. I'm talking to you, Kim, and every few seconds, it just like jumps up. The screen just keeps, and it just keeps jumping. Uh, what, we're, what I'm going to do, so uh, many of you who are joining may not know this, I am going to, keep, I'm able to capture everything that you have said uh, and uh, know each and every one of you here. Uh, we will uh, address many of your questions that are popping up here uh, in a future show. Uh, Kim, you started something today, man. This has never happened on this show, ever. ever. And I have some wow. really nice people. Listen, you came wow. and set the bar high for everybody coming after you after today. Oh. <laughs> after today, everybody, after, everybody after you is gonna go like, oh, I gotta be like Kim's show. I gotta make sure people show oh up. Everyone's goodness. showing up. Hearts are happening. People are showing up. The questions are off the hook for you, my friend. Um, we are going to uh, take a break, everybody. Please feel free to come back. <laughs> thank you for the things you're saying. Um, we will be back in just a moment. Kim, thank you for enduring all of this, our late start, and a number of things that happened all on my shoulders. And I am going to make sure the last segment will go nice and smooth for you. No surprises at all. Nothing you need <laughs> to concern you. <laughs> all right. Uh, I do have a surprise for you, but we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment, everybody. Thank you. We've gone an hour and 16 minutes in this segment. Uh, it's almost time for, for me to take a nap. You can't relate to that. You're still a young woman. Uh, but an old <laughs> man like me is going to need to take a nap in a little bit. We'll be back for a little short, brief segment in just a moment. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.